Okay, in this video, we're gonna be talking about putting mindset that you have while you're standing over a putt. Recently, doing some uh, player reviews, talking to some players that I coach after tournaments and discussing with them about their performance, uncovered a few little interesting facts about uh, players' mindset when it comes to holding putts or missing putts for that matter. What we found is that certain players were fearful not of making parts, but of fearful of missing parts. And in my experience, there's only two things that can happen when you part. You make it, or you don't. Yet what we found with some of these players is that they were worrying too much about the outcome, in this case, worrying about the miss, that they were trying to, let's say from longer range, get the ball close. Now. Golf is not a game about getting the ball close. Golf is about getting the ball in the hole as soon as possible, which would mean you're reducing your score. So the lower score wins. So to me, it makes no sense that, why would you be trying to get it close? You know, if you have that mentality, then, you know, when you're trying to hit the dartboard, you're trying to hit the bullseye, you're not just trying to hit the dartboard. <laughs> that analogy I use for players sometimes seems to resonate with them. You're trying to hit a specific target. Golf would be the same in putting. You can take that all the way back to the tee within reason on a par three. You can, you can hole out from the tee. You can have a hole in one. You can, from the fairway, from 100 meters, hit a wedge into the hole. That's possible. But are you trying to hit it close? Or are you trying to hole it? That chip shot, how often are tour players trying to hold their chip shot? I can promise you they're trying to hold it all the time. They don't always hold it, but they can. They're trying to get it, they're not trying to get it close. So I guess this, this mindset shift that I'm trying to talk about here today is that players, you know, in statistics that I've, I've studied more recently too, is that majority of golfers high in the 90% range tend to leave their putts short underread their putts. Those two factors come into consideration. So something for you golfers out there to consider, if you're worried about that putt going too far past, the classic case is you've got a 15 foot putt, 20 fot putt down the hill for birdie, and it's really fast. And you're worried about it getting too far away from you. If it misses, then straight away you're, playing, you're putting cautiously, putting tentatively. You're not trying to make the first one because you're thinking about what if I hit this too hard, it's gonna go too far past. So straight away, the mindset's incorrect. Whereas you should be asking yourself the question like, what does my ball have to do to go in? Simple question, right? But very powerful. So what does my ball have to do to go in if I've got that 15 footer down the hill with a bit of break? Straight away, that starts you thinking about where does my ball have to start? What does it have to roll over? How hard does it have to be going? How big a swing do I have to make? Instantly gets you thinking about in something technically and maybe a bit of feel and green reading involved in that as to what you have to do to get the ball to go in the hole. So that would be preferred rather than the opposite. Another thing I do with players is get them to do their statistics counting parts made from certain distances. So a good example would be say from three feet. What is your percentage make over the course of a year from three feet? Now for me when I was playing in my final year before I stopped coaching I was about 98% from three feet. For a year. Now, depending on what level of golfer you are, that may progress down. Uh, let's say you're a mid handicapper, that may be somewhere in the 90 to 95% range, for example, from three feet. If you're a mid to high handicapper, that may be 85 to 90%. Something like that, I'm not too sure. But either way, it's going to be a fairly high number that you would make more three footers than you do miss. So if you know that in the back of your head, and here you are, you're that same person who has that 15 footer down the hill and you're worried about hitting it too far past about the one coming back if you know that your 90% chance of making or in my case 98% chance of making it or some of the tour players are 100% if you know that then you shouldn't be any worry about hitting it too far past if the ball doesn't get to the hole it's never going to go in anyway we know that for a fact that's quite simple so try and use them just the pure math pure numbers to try and help you um, give that ball an opportunity of going in. So another exercise I get players to do, knowing, I guess, armed with the fact that players under read and under hit. I've done this with a few players, tour players as well, 
is in practice, get them to have a day where they go out and play, and maybe you can try this at home. When you go play next, you have two goals. On every part, you must aim higher than you think, and you must hit it firmer than you think. So that every ball must finish high, if it misses, if it misses, of course, must finish on the high side and must finish past the hole. That's your objective. So what you, you're trying to do is tally how many times you miss low and short. In my experience, those two factors there are killers for stopping you from holding more parts. With this exercise, with players that I've done this with before, the results are astounding. Players make more parts. A common phrase that I hear back is that, coach, I tried to aim higher today and hit it harder, but guess what? The hole got in the way. <laughs> so the ball found its way into the hole more often. So if you know that the majority of golfers in the planet, me included, I'm one of them, tend to underread and under hit, why don't we go in there to every putt thinking about aiming a little higher, hitting it a little harder? See how you putt, give it a go. What have you got to lose? Gravity has a huge effect on it and having the ball come in the high side has more of a chance of it lipping in than it does if it's coming into the low side. It has more chance of lipping out. So armed with this information, your statistics on the make rate from close range, trying to aim higher, trying to get that ball to go a little bit harder. I think if you go out there and give it a try, you might just be surprised too that how many times your ball finds the bottom of the cup, which is what we're on, right? So next time you're out there thinking about, oh, I don't want to hit this too hard or I don't want to hit it too far past, take a think about back to this. Give yourself an opportunity. You want to give that ball every chance of getting into the hole. You may just surprise yourself with how many parts you can make. I hope that helps you at home, make some more parts, just changing your mindset. Um, in the meantime, stay tuned for some more videos similar like this. Thanks again.